Hi, uh, my name is Tim Tabake, and I'm here to present um, Major Migrations Made Easy. I uh, appreciate you all for coming, uh, especially as this is one of the few English language presentations, and it takes place as lunch is being served outside. The way I see it, you either really like the subject from the title and the abstract, or perhaps, like me, you had some difficulty reading the other abstracts. Now, if you read the abstract, I you can probably already see the point I will try to make uh, from a mile away. So that's why I want to change things up a bit by not spending 10 minutes on an introduction. Instead, I will give you all the goodness up front and then deconstruct how we got there. Uh, finally, I will give you some pointers on where to go from here so you two can start migrating your projects. So, without further ado, here's two commands to migrate your projects from JUnit 4 to JUnit 5. This will update dependencies, imports, and assertions. It will also rewrite expected exceptions and other JUnit 4 test rules. And finally, it will upgrade further test libraries such as Mokito and Wiremock. Next up, here's how to migrate a Spring Boot application to the latest version. This works all the way back to Spring Boot 1.5. It will update dependencies, properties, and deprecations from any of old older versions. It uh, includes the JUnit 5 migration seen before, as well as any Spring-specific test construct. Now, hopefully, given recent developments, you've already adopted the latest supported version. But who knows, maybe you migrated in a hurry. Running this command ensures any remaining migration steps are properly applied. As a final example, here's how to migrate a Java 8 project to Java 11 and beyond. This will add now required JavaX dependencies to your build file. Any language deprecations are converted to their re suggested replacements. This command will also update the compiler source and target versions and update plugins, such as Jacoco, for code coverage. All these necessary but mind-numbing steps are done for you with the execution of a simple command. Now, hopefully, having seen three examples, a common pattern starts to emerge. This pattern is always the same. Uh, first, apply a build tool plugin for open rewrite. I've used Maven in my examples, but Gradle works just as well. Then, depending on the changes you want to make, add a dependency on the respective open rewrite module. And lastly, run the open rewrite plugin with the migration recipe that you want to execute. And don't worry if you didn't catch all the examples, so I'll share a link at the end. So with that out of the way, let's set define the structure for the rest of this talk. I will tell you how open rewrite works, and that will allow you to discover the project's potential. Uh, next, we'll look at current and future applications of Open Rewrite. That way you know what you can apply right now and what is still to come. Lastly, I will tell you where to learn more about Open Rewrite so that you uh, can start migrating your project. So, as a bit of background, Open Rewrite was started at Netflix, initially to aid in the migration of an internal logging framework. It soon became apparent that the tool can be used for more such changes, and it has since been spun out into an open source project. Behind Open Rewrite, there's a company called Moderna, which has committed to making all recipes available open source. Their focus is on applying recipes at scale, and I encourage you to check out their tooling and offerings as well. The initial focus is on uh, Java virtual machine languages and surrounding technologies. At its core, there's support for multiple languages, and this in turn unlocks support for build tools and libraries. Ultimately, refactoring entire frameworks and their platforms is supported. To apply these transformations, Open Rewrite needs a thorough understanding of your code. They achieve this by building up a detailed abstract syntax tree of your code with some defining characteristics. They annotate each element with the exact type. This allows them to uh, match exact code patterns for transformation. Uh, the format preservation ensures any new code adopts the surrounding code style. This is especially useful when formatting is not consistent throughout projects. 
Together, this makes Open Rewind exceptionally good at safe code transformation. Their changes are minimally invasive and guaranteed to work, in part due to their do-no-harm mentality. By manipulating the full abstract syntax tree, Open Rewrite can far exceed simple search and replace operations. With the full abstract syntax tree built, we need to instruct Open Rewrite what operations to apply, where in your code. Recipes are how you define such a group of search and refactoring operations. Together, they accomplish a higher level task, such as a framework migration. Recipes can consist of a single standalone application uh, operation or be linked together with other recipes. Open Rewrite comes with a large collection of, uh, of fine-grade recipes out of the box that can be combined for, my, uh, for common migration steps. More coarse-grained, application-specific recipes uh, are grouped together into modules. These modules, for there are modules, for example, for logging frameworks, testing frameworks, and applications frameworks, such as Spring. In my opinion, the abstract syntax tree, combined with the large collection of open source recipes, is what sets Open Rewrite apart from other similar tools, such as Google Error Prone's Refast. Now I want to show you how migration recipes are configured in Open Rewrite. Let us briefly revisit the JUnit 5 migration I showed you earlier. I want you to imagine what steps would be needed for a JUnit 5 migration. You would likely know a couple of the steps already. Among others, you would have to update the test annotations. But you would also have to update the assertions and sometimes the argument order. You'd have to update all imports and update any test rules, and that's just getting started. Notice how each step is reflected as a separate uh, recipe in this YAML configuration file. Some refer to and configure generic steps, such as the change type recipe. Others are implemented as an imperative step, a dedicated Java visitor that changes the abstract syntax tree. All these steps combine to achieve a complete JUnit 5 migration. And this is a common pattern with Open Rewrite. Large migrations are broken up into small reusable steps. When we run this recipe, we get predictable results. Our imports are converted as we would expect. Our, our Morquito runner is converted into using the extension. Lifecycle annotations such as add before are correctly replaced. Now, interestingly, we can see how Open Rewrite shines through when it comes to converted expected exceptions. Having the full power of an abstract syntax tree combined with a Java visitor allows us to adopt assert throws. This would not be possible with a regular expression approach. And this is just a small sample of what types of transformations are possible. So now that we've seen how Open Rewrite works, let's have a look at what you can do with it. Obviously, by now we've seen that it is well suited to migrations. You've mostly seen migrations from one version to another, but you can also migrate from one framework to another. If you want to switch from log4j to SLF4j, you can. Same thing if you want to switch between JUnit and assertj. And even larger migrations are in development. Another application is fixing static analysis findings. A large collection of check style, sonar, and security findings are supported to allow you to reduce your d technical depth in minutes. Finally, there's a whole class of recipes to enforce code style. Rather than uh, merely apply a formatter, these styles recipes go a step further to actually change your code. This ensures your code style reads consistently from project to project. And in addition to what's already available, it's fairly easy to add custom recipes specific to your project. So now that we've seen how it works and what it can do, let's briefly look at what is still to come. As you've seen, Open Rewrite has dedicated parsers for multiple languages already. But as you can imagine, they have some catching up to do still. Uh, they are working on a parser for both Java 17 and Kotlin. 
Note that you're perfectly able to run on Java 17, but you cannot yet use any of the new language features. The interesting thing about Kotlin is going to be that Java migration recipes will just work, even though the languages is look very different. Another interesting development is the Spring Boot Migrator project. It builds upon OpenAWrite to migrate projects towards Spring from other frameworks. All three of these features are in active development. It's not yet clear when you can use any of this, but interesting developments nonetheless. Oh, no. So with that, we are getting near the end of my presentation. Before I send you on your way, I want to recommend a few resources where you can learn more. Firstly, there's extensive documentation and tutorials available. These will teach you how OpenRewrite works, how to apply common recipes, and how to develop your own. Secondly, if you want to try some recipes quickly, have a look at app.moderna.io. They provide a clean interface to browse available recipes and apply them to open source projects. Development is all on GitHub with new suggestions picked up with surprising speed. And as we've already seen, it's quite easy to contribute minor migration steps. And if you have any questions, I found the team behind Open Rewrite to be very res friendly and responsive. And if the commands I showed you at the beginning came by a little too fast, I've written a blog post to accompany this presentation. The blog post migrates an old Spring Path Clinic branch from Spring Boot 1.5 on Java 8, all the way up to Spring Boot 2.5 on Java 17. That way you can um, play around with the commands and see the changes made at every step. For your own projects, I recommend you start with the testing framework migrations. They are an easy way to gain confidence in the tool and see what it can do for your projects. So, in summary, Open Rewrite is a great and versatile tool to help you keep your projects up to date. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for coming. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out either in person or online. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and wish you good luck migrating your projects. <laughs>